Back in Rise of Iron, we learned of a last ditch attempt to stop a SIVA outbreak in the replication chamber of Site 6. Hundreds of Iron Lords would rush into the Cosmodrome only to be gunned down by Rasputin's forces. In the end, we learned that only nine of them reached the replication chamber and would change the fate forever until it was later unearthed by the fallen scavengers. Today we are going to explain the backstory of Lord Felwinter and what Clovis Bray and the Seven Seraphs are trying to cover up involving his past. <laughs> Long ago, a guardian would get risen by a random ghost out there in the wild. This was before the city, before humans had a safe haven to call home under the protection of this alien god. At the time this exo was risen, he did not know his name. We know that many exos have a number attached to their name like Cade 6, Banshee 44, and so on, which relates to the number of times they've been rebooted in the past. But this Risen was a little bit different, now, I'm sure there was a number attached to his name as well, but the thing is, he didn't know what it was, as his ghost simply decided to call him Felwinter. As one of the first humans to get Risen by the Traveler and its powers, Felwinter began his early life as a warlord in this new age of Earth. So in the cards we can learn that Felwinter tried to contact Rasputin many times, he would talk to other warlords out there, and even claim an entire mountain as his own. Now this of course is Felwinter Peak, which we can see in Rise of Iron and the Iron Temple, and here's what that card has to say. Long before the last of the Iron Lords descended into the Plaguelands, this peak was the domain of one of their own, Lord Felwinter. His maps and outposts show the Risen Exo roamed free from the ROC to the eastern border known as Sighton Ridge before taking the Oath. There is no evidence of human enclaves or encampments within this area, nor survivors within the Cosmodrome walls, but extensive one-way audio recordings with an unknown entity did survive. A chance meeting with Lord Teemer in the Moth Yards led to Teemer's first reports on the promises of Siva. Felwinter's conscription into the ranks and the raising of the Iron Temple commenced shortly thereafter. So at the end of the card there, we learn of Felwinter's domain and how he joined the forces of the Iron Lords. As mentioned, Felwinter's territory consisted of parts of Old Russia and this giant mountain which he named after himself in the distance. As he was exploring one day venturing into his lands, he found Lord Teemer passing through, and instead of just killing him from trespassing in his land, they discussed Siva for a while, and shortly after, Felwinter decided to join the lords themselves. Now, although Felwinter was now an Iron Lord and focused on the betterment of humanity, some of his old warlord ways definitely did appear in some of these cards. One of these examples is when he encountered another warlord during the Dark Age named Sighton. Now, in this card, Felwinter was trying to persuade Sighton to become an Iron Lord as well, but things kind of went sideways and they began to fight. You know we'll burn the world down before we let the Iron Lords rule it. The larger man gasped, breathing out of his mouth, his face a bloody mess. The void light in Felwinter's hand snapped, and so did the warlord's neck. Radagast is scattered, Perun is indecisive. Silimar wants to build a tower and hide, but they're going to change the world. No one can stop them, Felwinter said quietly to the corpse. He parted his coat and drew a bronze shotgun. Will it be for the better? I don't know, but they mean to end the fighting, so I don't have to sleep with my back to the wall every night, light in my hand. And that's not nothing. He paused as if waiting for something. Normally, this is where I'll ask you to reconsider, tell you that you should come with me, see how powerful your light can become. But I know you, Sighton, what you do with the land you take, with its people. The other lords especially sound and might let you walk away. I'm not going to give them that chance. Satan's ghost sparked into view from above, bringing its eye to bear on its fallen charge. The warlord emerged from a radiant column, a frenzied shout at his lips. Fenwinter's shotgun crackled like thunder, once for the warlord, and again for his ghost. So this card is pretty cool. You heard me mention that the point Felwinter was trying to make here is he was trying to go up to Sighton and be like, hey man, you don't have to be a warlord anymore. Stop doing all this terrible crap and just become an iron lord. Help us out, help the people out, and become a better version of yourself. Now, as you can imagine, things didn't go too well. He didn't listen, so Felwinter killed him. 
Asphalt Winter was standing there talking over his body, saying what he did wrong. He was sort of waiting for his ghost to come back and revive him because he knew that was going to be a thing. So when the ghost eventually did, he killed both of them once again, and that guy is no longer an issue. But sometime later, we know that the Iron Lords wiped out most of the Warlords of Earth and established the last safe city, where their new focus was to protect humanity and create a safe home for all. Felwinter tried to communicate with the Warmind, called it Rasputin. Consume, enhance, replicate, said he could make it understand, tell him that we meant no harm. Rasputin didn't answer the words. So that little card there was an example of how Fowinter tried to communicate with Rasputin but failed many times. Now, I think there is some cards where they say he did get some type of connection there. I tried looking for that, couldn't really find it. But this is imperative during the Siva Crisis as he's like, Hey Rasputin, you know, we don't mean any harm, don't kill us all, and then he killed a bunch of them. Siva had been lost to time. When Teemer tracked it to the Cosmodrome, we thought our quest was finally over. Siva would be ours for the taking. Rasputin responded. More than a hundred Iron Lords entered the Plague Lands. Only nine reached the Replication Chamber. So as the hundreds of Iron Lords would push into the Plague Land, this is when Rasputin triggered those defenses and centuries to sort of take them all down. And although we don't specifically see Falwinter, I'm sure you can try and make out which one of him here is one of these models, this was his fate, one of the Iron Lords who sacrificed themselves in the Replication Chamber. Now, there is also a weapon in Destiny 1 that goes by the name of Felwinter's Lie. So there's been much controversy with the name of this weapon as to what the lie actually was, but that still remains a mystery for the most part. Of course, we can throw theories out there with a bunch of evidence we have, but it could have just been a name that was created for fun by the Bungie writers. One theory does suggest though that his lie is what I mentioned earlier. He told the Iron Lords he was going to recruit these warlords, but ended up killing them instead. Now I could see that being a pretty plausible option, but let's talk about something involving Rasputin and the cover-up that may be hiding in plain sight when it comes to Felwinter. So the previous minutes of this video were me explaining Felwinter's backstory and how he became an Iron Lord from the Dark Age of the Warlords. But in Destiny 2, we got a new card that adds to the fire even more and it talks about all this crazy stuff. So you heard me mention how Felwinter doesn't remember his name and the ghost revives him telling him, hey, your name's Felwinter and that's what you're gonna go with. Now here's the card that explains that within Destiny 2 and adds even more question involving things like Clovis Bray. Listen to me carefully, they're coming for you. They'll ask you for a name, your name is Felwinter. I don't think that's my name. I know, say it anyway. Why can't I remember my name? I always remember my name. Something's wrong. Was I damaged in crypt processing? I don't know anything about the Deepstone Crypt, before my time. What the hell are you? You don't trust me? <laughs> no, you will. You're a very presumptuous little drone. What makes you think that? No one else will help you. It's kill or die out here. So, wow. Firstly, this release when Destiny 2 came out, and this was before Forsaken, so it does have some info on the Deepstone Crypt, but we've definitely learned a lot more since last year and with Kate's death and all of that. But from this lore, we can tell that Felwinter is talking to a ghost as it says, Little Drone. This was something that the other first ghosts were called in various cards, for example, the ones we have within Black Armory. What's weird and kind of stands out during this conversation is that Felwinter says something's wrong. Why can't I remember my name? Did something happen in crypt processing? Then the ghost is like, alright man, trust me, listen to me very carefully. They're coming for you. You just use this name for now and things will be fine. So that obviously brings up so many questions. First, something changed. Apparently Felwinter was able to remember his memory before, like he was sort of exempt with these wipes or something. He kept rebooting himself and he wouldn't lose his memory and things were fine, but this time he doesn't remember. A random ghost tells him his name is Felwinter and someone is coming for him. Now the people or thing that may be coming for Felwinter is unclear, but if I had to guess it would involve something with the Deepstone Crypt, Clovis Bray, or the Seven Seraphs. 
We know from Forsaken, Kate explains that when he was on Venus, he told his son Ace about some top secret information about the Vex or Ahamkar or something like that. And then he tells Ace, you know, don't tell anyone or it might mean Wipesville again for me, suggesting that his mind would get wiped because he knew about something important. Now there are other examples of this present throughout the lore, but it seems like the same thing is happening here. Previous times fell into remembered, but now somebody wiped his memory on purpose because he possibly knew some top secret info and this ghost decided to be a nice guy or gal and bring him back to life. Now what exactly fell into new is kind of hard to tell. Maybe he found some way to reboot his exo body because he suffered damages or something like that without losing his memory. Or it could have been something else pretty substantial involving Clovis Bray and they're like, hey, you can't know about this, we're gonna wipe your mind on purpose. But things get even crazier when we read Lord Teemer's card. Here it is. Teemer's storm trance tears through a gang of drags as Felwinter stumbles through the shifting sands behind him, miles inland of what remains of the Arabian shores. Where are you taking me? Felwinter rushes to Timur's side, his eyes jumping focus, anticipating another attack. You seem far too obsessed with these war minds. Timur stops and stares into the horizon as if smelling something. Not danger, but discovery. He draws his fellow Iron Lord close. Tell me, Felwinter, he whispers. What does the word Seraph mean to you? Felwinter leans in to whisper back. Old Earth theology? I know its power well, one can make great use of the traps of faith and its myths. Damn you exos, the whisper game abandoned. Do you even ponder the before or that number etched into your flesh? Do you see yourself in your dreams? The a shank, then another, then more. Felwinter hits the ground and reaches for his sidearm. Timur hates interruptions and his face shows it. A wash of arc light grows in his hands and erupts as the pack of machine dogs falls nearly in unison. Timur grabs Felwinter, bringing him back to his feet and says, Have you ever wondered what it is that calls to you in that void of memory where the edge of the past infects your present? He returns to his game of whispers. It's an itch you can't scratch, isn't it? Well, maybe you can. You think I am one of them? That all exos are? Lord Felwinter, I know what you are, and you are no warmind or even one of its puppets. Come, you must see this. He makes a gesture like he's casting his spell over the sand. Follow my footfalls, the area is rigged with dirty fallen nonsense. They struggle up on the dunes, Felwinter glides ahead. As he lands, a sandstorm rises to meet him. More shanks, hundreds of them. Behind them, a lone vandal sniper lays down covering fire. So they go on with these shanks and vandal fight for a bit, and then they say this. With all respect, Lord Teemer, whatever game you are playing with me has gone on far too long. This is another dead zone. Oh, is it? Teemer directs Felwinter's eyes toward the eastern horizon, where a building crowned with the initials CB is now in view. We all have creators, humans, exo, war minds, even those poor awoken. Some are just easier to find. So this is pretty epic. Personally, myself, I've never heard this card before, and I was just doing some searching around for this video, put in some of the Iron Lord's names, and this one came up. Now, in summary, Timur takes Felwinter to Mars to show him his creator. He mentions things like Seraph and even Clovis Bray. Now, we know that Clovis Bray created the Exos, and that gives us even more evidence as he might have been the one to, you know, wipe Felwinter's mind and cover all of this up, but I was even surprised that they mentioned the word Seraph in actual text. The Seven Seraphs in 2013 concept used to be a faction in Destiny 1. In later ride-along videos, the devs mentioned that the higher-ups at the Cosmodrome, the Seven Seraphs, planted Rasputin's bunker in plain sight, suggesting that they had a hand themselves in creating the War Mines, which we know that Clovis Bray built. So are the Seraphs some type of secret faction within Clovis Bray trying to hide this information? Do they still exist, and are they on Enceladus? This one's for the mines behind the deep stone crypt. You think just because you made me, you can unmake me? Hey, I understand. If I were you, I wouldn't want people knowing what I did either. Guess you better hope I didn't tell anyone about the crypt. Or about the, um, what was it? Oh yeah, long, slow whisper. Because if I did, that would be real bad for you, huh? I may be dead, but I guarantee you ain't hurt the last of me. <laughs> Anyway, Guardians, that's all I got for today's video. 
I myself was a little rusty on some of my Iron Lord lore, so hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see some more on some of the other Iron Lords, definitely let me know down below. But if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for some more awesome Destiny 2 news and entertainment. My name is Evade, and I'll catch you Guardians in the next one.